Hello my soccer universe, let's end it in Italy and then we're going into full World Cup mode. Although I have a slight transitional video tomorrow that covers uh, both sides of it. And no, it does not feature uh, the Portuguese diva at all. Enough of that, we're talking uh, Serie A now and where in Juventus, uh, we, who are one of the stories, I put already a spotlight on them last uh, week, where, you know, the young guys, seemingly Juve start to deliver uh, the games, they have now six wins in a row, are up to third in the table. The only thing that, where I refrain of saying, you know, they are now for real is that while the results were coming, the performances were not quite like that, and it's also not really what uh, potentially Allegri would have wanted uh, if he would, if it was after him. He was kind of forced to take the uh, young guys, but it's interesting to see. Inter had a pretty good week. I have to have to say they're also kind of back in this chasing pack behind Napoli with a huge win at Inter and also bouncing back from the loss to Juve by just trouncing Bologna. But I always feel that this is something they do at all times. But Bologna actually, if you see them up there, they didn't do so badly for themselves as well. Although a 6-1 at Inter does not look good overall. However, uh, Atalanta, that's done. They had two big home games over the uh, uh, two big home games and an away game. They lost three in a row. I think Atalanta definitely need to regroup. I don't think that Atalanta um, are now Champions League contenders anymore, uh, especially since you lost many of those games at home. Uh, and yeah, I have to, of course, talk about my favorite team, Milan, where honestly, um, yes, they are still getting the points. And we always have to caveat it. There are injuries that um, probably make things worse than they are, especially in defense. Uh, Tata Rojano, Tomori are not getting on the same, same page. The entire right side is out with injuries. So it's very much makeshift and they're still hanging in there. However, you're also losing ground, especially lose, losing ground against opposition that are sitting deep, uh, like Cremonese did, where you have no uh, ways of breaking them down. And on top of that, you have important players missing and then Pioli tries to change it up even more. So, yeah, uh, it was kind of a mixed bag for me, even the win on the weekend against Fiorentina. While I was happy for that win, uh, it was not a great performance. I actually thought that Fiorentina probably would have deserved a, a, a draw. I was kind of, yeah, again a draw, now 10 points behind Napoli. And then they get the, the goal. Yeah, get the goal. And I, But I was completely in my mind. I already had accepted the 1-1 as the just result. So, yeah. Uh, luck falls their way. Uh, the one thing I want to say is they are not so far behind their pace from last season. So uh, it's kind of there also last season. They had kind of a distance to Inter at one point um, and then could make that up. So um, I'm not saying it's over yet. However, everything points towards Napoli who got in this week two wins again nothing fancy but you get it done and again at least against Uden in the first half you looked pretty irresistible and we'll start actually with Napoli against Empoli which was Empoli was the team that beat them twice last season and kind of also ended that title campaign uh, with these results and gave them again a really really hard time it took them a long time until they got a penalty uh, in the 69th that Lozano could convert, but uh, it, it was really hard work for Napoli. Then Luperto gets sent and often Zielinski makes a second goal, but it uh, was far, far from easy for Napoli, that, that, that one. Um, Udine again not getting a win, 1-1 against Spezia, and I said Udine had a great start, but they are really coming down again and will probably finish somewhere mid-table despite the great start that they had. Cremonese, Milan, I mean... Uh, it's one of those Cremonese knew they have to keep it tight. Milan, as I said, had many uh, injuries. Uh, if you have uh, Theo missing and if Giroud missing, although Giroud I think could be replaced, but uh, Theo missing and then you don't play Leao, you take all the speed out of the team. And this reminds me very much of the Gattuso era and before where there was just the speed missing. Everyone knows they have to just sit deep and wait for it. Um, and wait, you know, uh, see it out. 
And Milan created chances. I mean, Malik Jaw had, uh, I think, a few headers. I mean, this, this was the only way that you could break them down, but it was never really happening for them. And then once you find the breakthrough in the 56 through or, or, or Rishi, there's an offside in the build-up. Although this was have such been such a brilliant goal. I think if that goal goes in, Milan wins 2-2 to two, two, 3 nil, and the game is done. So uh, the longer it went, the more I had the feeling, yeah, this is going to end in a nil-nil draw. There was just nothing. I was just... Uh, Horrible, horrible game. Then, Lecce beating Atalanta 2-1. Actually, I don't have a Georgia, but Lecce are the big winners of this round. They are in the expect standing. They rose by more than five points, as, as we'll see. So, a uh, pretty big one there. Roma against Sassuola. Roma also uh, very much soul-searching. I for, for, for forgot them a little bit uh, in my preview. And the preamble, in a way. Uh, Tammy Abram gives a balloon in the 80. Do you think you're done? And then Pinamonte gets an equalizer. So uh, you back to square one. And it was not, was, 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 was not fun. Uh, Fiorentina over Salentano. And then Inter, as I said. Luca Yanis gives Bologna a lead in the 22nd. And everyone who thought, yeah, maybe that Bologna does it again. No. Uh, Inter can be very irresistible against this lower opposition, especially at home. There they tend to run or run up the score. And Aiden Jacob, DiMarco, Lautaro, DiMarco and Celanogli with a penalty. Uh, and who scored the, uh, the sixth goal for, for them? It was, of course, uh, Robin Gossens. Uh, make it a pretty big scoreline. And, you know, Inter needed that bounce back rather badly. Um, Torino tuned it over some Sampdoria. Again, Torino, I ca really cannot gauge where they are at. Juve get a very messy 1-0 win over Verona, lowly Verona, uh, with Moise Kane getting, getting a goal in the 60th and Alexander getting sent off with a straight red card late on. Uh, you know, it's these performances that Juve get the results and uh, for most Juve fans, that's all that they want from Juve. However, uh, you also look. Kind of, if you look at the performance side, it can be. It, it, it's very much a mixed bag, and, it, and I can very well see this. It goes now in their favor, but you know, in a few months down the road, it might actually not. And so, you will still work in progress. Lazio get a one nil over Monza at that point, actually so, uh, getting a second spot in the league. However, it was not to be, uh, because on the past weekend, first off, uh, it is Napoli. Kicking it off, as I said, looking pretty irresistible. I would say almost for about an hour. Having uh, Udinese fully under control. Victor Osimen scoring a great header after Elmas Cross. Uh, Zielinski Lozano um, combining brilliantly to make it second. And when Elmas made it 3 0, you thought the game is done. Um, so much so that I almost. Uh, you know, I then my sh focus shifted towards the bon towards the Bundesliga and also a bit Premier pre pre League, but I had it uh, on. And then Nestorovsky pulls one back, and then Samajic puts another one back, and within three minutes it's three two. And you might be nerves might be coming now. However, there was not another single shot on Golden. Um, they took it seriously, and in the end they see it out. It was a three two win. Um, and that's all that counts. Get the points in the bag. Let's with another big win over Sampdoria. Sampdoria is a team that I'm really, really worried about. Bologna, big 3-0 win over uh, Sassuolo, earning them the spot among one of the big winners because Sassuolo, that's a derby for them and it's not, uh, it's not, ne it's never a straightforward game, although Sassuolo this season doesn't seem as strong as they have been in past seasons. Atalanta against Inter was almost a carbon copy in, in a way of the Atalanta-Napoli game on the weekend before where Atalanta come out blazing, take the lead through another wonderful Lukman penalty. I think the one against Napoli was even better. And then within 10 minutes, Dzeko equalizes and then in the second half, Inter is the better team and Dzeko gets a brace and Palomino makes it 3-1. You thought it's down and out, however, Palomino makes up for his own goal, uh, pulls one back in the 77th and then Atalanta are pressing but just cannot find the equalizer. To be honest, they never really had a big equalizing chance as well. High drama at the end of, of the game at the Olympico between Roma and Torino. Um, with honestly, while Roma had more of the game, Torino uh, took the lead through Linetti in the 
fifth and it was not at 107 and they had a few chances to even make it even two but late on then Roma actually turned it on again with Dybala coming on as well suddenly he's not injured anymore I guess there's a World Cup coming or something like that uh, and they have a few few, few chances and then have the big one I mean Mourinho gets sent off for insulting the referee he for once admitted to it uh, I don't want to comment really much on the car stop situation between him and um, Mourinho because I honestly know too little about it. But Roma get a penalty uh, in the 92nd and Dybala doesn't want to take it. So Belotti has to take it against his former team where he was the captain. And you could see that he's not very wanting to take it. Uh, and he puts it on the outside of the left post, although the goalie wall was in the other direction. So this was not meant to be. However, the ensuing corner results in then Dybala uh, taking a shot, hitting the crossbar, and from that rebound, Nemanja Matic yanks it in the net. It takes the slightest of deflections that actually make it uh, non-savable for uh, Milinkovic-Savic. That's the keeper and not uh, the player for Lazio, but a wild ending, but again, Roma not looking super convincing, which is also what we have to say for Milan. Um, I really like how Giroud sent Leao in the second minute, and you see Leao sees an opening, he has the ball, and suddenly he, in seconds, he has created separation. That was great to see. That was really great to see. However, what followed afterwards, Boy, was this bad. Boy, was this bad in the first half. It seemed like every uh, duel, every pressing attack, every uh, bounce went Fiorentina's way. They worked their ass off and Milan kind of couldn't get, get, get it. They couldn't get any control. And yes, here and there they created chances. But as soon as uh, there were multiple occasions, I thought, now they have the ball and now it bounces again to a Fiorentina player who can launch an attack. And on the back, they're wide open wide open it really didn't look good and uh, I think if, if Fiorentina would have had a proper striker they would have probably scored before that the goal that Fiorentina got to equalize was a little bit of a fluke because Kalulu couldn't clear it very well so uh, it, it comes to Icone and Barak takes a shot is uh, very badly uh, deflected um, and then um, Tatarushano, it passes on him, it doesn't look good, but with that dif deflection, you cannot really blame him for that. Tomori didn't maybe play great, but he had two really big saves in the second half. First, attacking, where I was dead set, this is going to be a penalty for uh, Fiat Fio Fio either. But it was so hard to see whether he played the ball first or whether uh, he played the man first. In the end, they, they went with the call on the pitch, but I really thought this is going to be a penalty. Uh, that was a let off, and then he cleared off the line one, so big ones there. Um, Brahim Diaz, both games that he played, was not good, and honestly, yes, I know that uh, the Ketelare has been a little bit of a disappointment so far. Hey, give him time, but play him a little bit. Play him a little bit exactly in these uh, games because Brahim Diaz is not, even it's Van Svigli, he's not the great player. I always say Brahim Diaz should be an impact sub. That's as easy as it is. But uh, Sergino Diaz actually going forward brought a little bit of movement in. But I was, uh, especially by Astor Franks, uh, really impressed. Uh, he actually showed well because uh, Kronich, forget about it. Now, Leao had uh, two big chances in the second half, and I would say from minute 60 on, especially after Death came, came on. Yes, there was a big chance that Tomori cleared, but Milan had control of the, of, of the game. Uh, Giroud had, had, had a chance. I think um, it seemed to me that they finally got it together, and they probably should have scored right there. And then they just couldn't find it, and so it's a freak goal, a bizarre goal. Ongo from Vilenko, which with a, a cross from Franks come, come in. Uh, a few of the Fiorentina goalie bumps into Rebic, uh, goes under the ball, and Milenko, which puts it in, in, in his own net. I thought that the goal will be this is out. It was not a 2 1 win out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, but it was not a good, good performance by Milan. It's good to end the, the year uh, with a win. Um, also, Ivan Gazidis uh, is leaving the club. Um, I want to commend him for the 
great work that he has actually done for Milan. But now maybe it's another time to turn a new page and maybe go a little bit more, uh, less frugal, but a little bit more um, behaving like Milan. But again, this is not a knock on Gazidis. He did what he needed to do and uh, he was part of rebuilding Milan in a big way. So uh, good on him. And then the last one was Juve against Lazio. Honestly, I expected a little bit more from the game. Yes, Lazari and Immobile were not playing uh, and Lazio looked a little bit hampered by that. But overall, Juve deserved their 3-0 win. Moisken scoring again and the Milik laid on, but Juve were very dominant. I did not get why Juve is playing in the black jerseys at home against uh, Lazio and the Lazio and the White Jersey when both could play in their home kits more or less. Maybe Lazio could, you know, if you were playing in the home jersey, Lazio can play in the dark jersey. That I did not get at all. Other than that, I have had to say this was probably one of the better, if not the best, Juve performance this season. Uh, well, I guess Inter in the second half. I mean, yes, at the uh, first half was not good against Inter. They were a little bit lucky to go in their nil-nil, although have to say uh i hear I, I really thought this was not a not a good game the director the derby the italia but they had chances for inter more in the first half but i uh, having said all that i think for a full nine nine minutes it might have been Juve's best performance i really really um never felt they're threatened by lazio in any way i really think they did quite well there so with all that going into the World Cup break and winter slash Christmas break, even uh, we have Napoli having an eight point lead over Milan. That's sizable. Not saying Napoli will win it, but it's squarely the ball is in their court. Uh, what scares me a little bit is you with two points behind uh, Milan, then uh, Inter, uh, Inter Lazio only point behind. I'm not worried about that as much about Lazio. Lazio have been have, have been a real rev revelation this season with Sarri's uh, tactics finally um, coming together. But it's that Inter is so close now and it's basically down to that Milan have three draws and Inter have, uh, despite having five losses, the rest they have won. So uh, yes, it's a little bit... Too close for comfort. Atalanta, Roma, uh, they were just fighting for the, Euro, for, for the European spots. But I think those seven will be the teams that will go into Europe next season. Uh, unless Fiorentina, Udinese or Torino can make a comeback. If I look at the bottom, looks really dire for Verona and Sampdoria already. Cremonese also having not won at all so far. Uh, but you know, miracle come, come, come in Serie A would not be something new. At the moment, it's exactly these three teams that are scheduled to go down. Napoli very set on, on becoming the champions. Uh, and the two Milan teams go into the Champions League again. Um, Atalanta seventh at the moment. We gotta see. I think it's a tight battle between them and the two Roman teams with Juve holding the advantage for this last Champions League spot. Coming back, I can give you the two rounds. We start actually with Milan coming back on the 4th of January against Salernitana away from home. Um, I think the big one is, of course, Inter against Napoli. That will tell us a whole lot about both teams already, I think. Uh, so that's one to look forward to. And then the other big game is Milan Roma on the uh, 8th of Jan uh, uh, January. That will be another pretty huge uh, game where Napoli have again an easy, easy one at Sampdoria. Although maybe there's some change in there. Um, Fiorentina Sassuolo could be interesting, although it's a mid table clash. So, yeah. That's it for this year from Serie A, uh, a great Serie A year for me personally, although it ends with Milan only being in second place, but you know, so be it. In any case, please, if you want to add anything, if any questions or comments, please add them below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!